What's up, Tube? Today we're going to be talking about easy post-processing techniques for editing portraits. Uh, many tutorials repeat the same old Photoshop workflows and require expensive software and hours of editing. I'm going to be showing you how to quickly and easily edit captivating portraits that stand apart using a device you may not expect with an app that costs less than the cup of coffee that you will enjoy watching my video. So sit back, enjoy, and uh, I'll show you what we're going to be needing. Okay, we're gonna get right into it. I'm gonna open up Facetune. This is uh, one of my favorite apps, honestly. It is so exciting what it the, what it allows you to do so simply and so you know for so cheap too for an app. What I'm gonna do is go ahead and just click start by importing your photo. It's got a little arrow at the top left. I'm gonna go ahead and tap that. I can open up a photo. I've got a couple portraits here. I'm gonna work on one of them today. I'm gonna use the maximum size. And this is really cool because you can work with raw. Photos, uh, the camera connector kit, I use that because I shoot with RAW sometimes, and so I'll import straight onto my iPad and get right down to business with this here. So if you have color correction things you need to do beforehand, I would recommend using Snapseed. I have another video tutorial on that that you can check out. Otherwise, if you're ready to go with your edits, we're going to get right into this. Now, I've got my portrait pretty much ready to go here. You can see that there's a little bit of tiredness maybe around his eyes or, you know, just general skin tones, as well as just the general, you know, fogginess in his eyes. One of the most important things, I think, in a portrait when you're working with pictures of people is that you want to draw as much attention to the eyes as you can. And in photos, the eyes sometimes don't have that intensity or shine as they might have in person, and you can really, really pull that out and it's very, very easy to do using this app. It's sharp enough, too, if you get the focus right, you can actually see there is my arm and me actually taking the photo behind him. So really, really sharp. We've got a lot of fun stuff to work with here, and we'll get right into it. Along the bottom, I've got some incredible tools here you may have been checking out already. You see Canvas, Whiten, Smooth, Details, Reshape, Patch, Tones, Red Eye, Defocus, Filters, and Frames. Now we won't be talking about everything here, so you'll have some fun exploring this and just getting to know it yourself. But the general use of the app and how it works is the same, so you'll be able to uh, really go forward on your own feeling confident that you know how to use the app properly. The first thing that I'll start by doing is fixing some of the skin. I don't necessarily think that his skin tones or whatever are the best. The texture is a little off, and we can bring back a lot of that by hitting the smooth. It's going to pull up some tools here. You can check this out. This is a great kind of explanation on how to use the tools. We're going to get right into it. Now you see my toolbar along the bottom has changed. I can move, smooth, erase, or change my brush size. Now I'm going to go ahead and hit brush. That's going to pull up the brush that I'm currently using. You can see the size there. I can change the size accordingly as well as the strength. I'm going to go kind of lower on the strength because you'll see that if you go too high, your photo can actually end up looking very nasty. I'll give you an example. You can see we're losing a lot of texture underneath his eyes and in his cheek area. And that's not good. We pull away. Looks overly edited. You see it on the left side of his face. This would be an example of a very poorly, poorly done job. And you know what, honestly? The truth is, I see too many people download this app and then do this to their photos. Don't be the person who does this to your photos. Original, this guy. This is how you started. Don't become this guy. I'm going to go ahead and go back to the beginning so we can get that back to normal. So great. We've got smooth here. I'm going to go ahead and get my strength down a little bit lower. Bring my size about the size of my fingertips so I can really, really paint. And I'm just going to fix underneath his eyes maybe a little bit. That's really flattering. If you can 
you know, bring some of that away. It's just shadows that make you look tired. Maybe some of the cheek. I can even raise my strength a little bit if I'm not really feeling like it's doing very much. But I really, really want to try to go as modestly with this particular feature as I'm able to because we don't want to get too crazy. Maybe a tiny bit right here, a little bit under the eye. And I'm not really doing too much close up to his eye because I want to keep the details of his eyelashes. You don't want to you don't want to take away from that because you can soften that too much. And see some of this area here, this is just natural skin. That's just a reflection and we want to keep that because when you zoom out, that keeps some natural texture to the photo. Keeps it looking real. Smooth out some of the area up here. Maybe right in where the eyebrows are, eyelids, and we're pulling back out. And you can see we've, we've done a nice job. I'll hit the compare button at the right. You can see we've just slightly removed some of that, some of that texture that we didn't really, we weren't really happy with. And if you wanted to make changes, we can tap on the eraser button and the brush is the same. We can still change the size and the strength. So depending on how much you want to erase or, you know, what size you want, of an area you want to be erasing, you can manipulate that. And I'll go ahead and hit check. We're moving right on. Next thing I'm going to do is tap the details button. This is where the fun really starts. And this is where the action's at. This is going to be working with the eyes. So details, I'm going to zoom in way up on the eye. I want to get the eye as my whole area here because this is the most important thing that I want to work with. And honestly, even not as much around his eye as just the center, the actual color of his eye. I want to make my brush size, again, about the size of my finger, maybe a little bit bigger. I can pick the area I want to brush. And then the strength, I don't want to go too much, but you can change this depending on the lighting, depending on you know what you were able to get to begin with, and you can bring out incredible detail. I'll show you. It almost makes the eye look moist again. You begin to kind of paint that color back, and you can see now around the eye, this area where it's becoming too black, you don't want a lot of blackness in that area. So I'll tap on the erase, bring my strength down a tiny bit, and I'm just going to go back over that area and make that look a little bit more natural. It's really the color that I want to pull out, not so much the dark. Details again, get the area on the lower end, right in the center, pulling out the greens, and just generally making that, that eye look glossy. Now around the rest of the eye, where it's white, we can uh, bring detail there too, and we can even go ahead and just quickly swipe over the eyelashes, pull some of that back, same to the eyebrows if you want to, detail in the hair. This eye is going to be fun, check this out. We're just going to paint lightly over the colored area of the eye. You can see right in the center that detail coming back. The green, the yellow, the brown. This is what makes a portrait so unique. Not too much in the eyelashes there. Bring back down some of the darkness. And there's another tool that I'm going to use here because it's windy, which in most cases you will have people with red eyes or whatever in, and you can whiten that. We can really bring the detail back to the color that we want. So pulling that out, you see. Now that's pretty sharp. That right away draws your attention pretty quickly to his eyes. And you can see beforehand, this is before and then we brought out the detail. And this might be a little bit dramatic, but I want to kind of give you an example on how this works, this tool works. If you feel like it is too dramatic, like maybe that's a little bit much. A couple of you viewers out there are getting a good laugh right now. Lower my strength. And I'm just going to wipe in general around the eye now, doing some basic erasing because I know the areas that are too intense. Still brought out some detail. Looks great. And you may bring out some detail in the hair a little bit, maybe the shirt, or if they have accessories like glasses or a bracelet or something that you want to accentuate, the details there are great. I'm going to hit save. The whiten tool, this brush that I was telling you about earlier, I'll bring that in to his eyes if I want to whiten them, or if a person is smiling, you can correct their teeth. We're going to bring it in. Just whiten that up a little bit, not too much, don't want to get too crazy. I don't want him to look freakish. Everything is in moderation. Great. Before, after. Now if there's anything that you want to fix, or if there's an imperfection or an area of skin you want to change or take off, there's a patch tool which is really easy to use. 
feel free to pause on these screens if you need to check this out or you know you can rewind and pause the video. I'm going to go ahead and tap on an area here and then I can drag this circle anywhere I want. It's a patch but I want to keep it as close as I can so I'm going to find an area on his lip where it blends. Okay. That's all right. I'm going to I'm going to pinch and then lower the area that I'm working with cuz I don't really need to change that much. We'll go ahead and save that. That's great. You can do more with this. I'm not really going to dwell on that for a long time. I think that tool is pretty self-explanatory. Defocus is great if you want to blur out the background. Uh, very easy to use, but it'll add a lot of depth of field. Makes it fun. In this shot, I was already at a pretty low aperture, but if you wanted to blur out his shirt or details specifically, this is very easy to use. When we're done, we can go ahead and hit the button at the top right and share to any social media. A lot of apps do this. This is great. Or I can save to the camera roll. Maybe I want to bring it into another app and do more corrections. And we're done. So now I'm going to go ahead and show you this whole workflow very quickly just so you can see how easy this is. I'm selecting the portrait that I want to work with today using the maximum size. Okay, and we're out. First thing we're going to do is get back our skin texture. Next we're going to bring out the details in the eyes. Eyelashes too. Eyebrows. good. Before and after. Great, we'll go ahead and save it. And on to the next. See how quick this is? Starting out with my smooth tool. Quickly brushing over the areas that I know. Next, details in the eyes. And we're done. One more. Who's that handsome guy? bit too much on that. We'll come back there later. We're racing now. up a couple areas. And finally the details. And that really is how easy it is.